Does anyone know what Indeed is or what Indeed does? Yeah. What's so? What do you? What's your uh, impression or perception of it? Uh, as in what do you do? Yeah. Um, so essentially, you um, you operate with all the job boards, is my understanding. Um, and so it's it provides um, companies and potential candidates with a platform to kind of uh, look at their needs, essentially. Yeah, some some element that's correct. So basically, we're have you has anyone else here has used a search engine before as well? I'm guessing, right? Mm. Perfect. So we're we're the number one job site in the UK, and um, we have the number one mobile app in 20 countries. So what we do is uh, just like you said before, it's a, it's a place where you can go and have a vast number of jobs, whether they be from direct employers to job boards to to whatever channel it is. And um, we have about 180 million visitors uh, worldwide, and we have 15, vis 15 million visitors each month from the UK specifically. So we do get a lot of people uh, obviously coming and using Indeed to, to look for jobs. Um, what we did recently was we got um, an, an independent company to do a survey for us to, to find out you know, how many people look for jobs and how often they look for jobs. And the results from that was that 85% of people actively look at jobs at least once a month. So that's... Um, they're unhappy, they say. Yeah. And, uh, that's people that are actively looking at jobs because they're unemployed, but people that are also obviously in employment. So every month, 85% of people are looking for jobs. So even with a, a tight labour market, as at the moment, people are always looking to see what else there is out there. And in, in, in October, we had 16.4 million people uh, visit Indeed to look for jobs. So that's, again, a huge, huge number of people that are consistently looking for work. So, I mean, what, what does that mean for, for small businesses? You have a question? Yeah, do you know what number of those 16 million move jobs? Uh, that's a good question. I can definitely ask someone in marketing to see if we've got any statistics on that. Um, but in terms of what does that mean for small businesses, so obviously it's good in terms of the sense of the economy in the UK economy, labour market is, is going down, so there's more and more people finding work consistently, and that's great news for the economy, uh, but it's almost bad news sometimes for small businesses, because it's incredibly competitive in terms of finding skilled labour. You have you know, a, lot of, a lot of people looking for work and a lot of jobs out there, which means that it's going to be hard to find the talent that you're looking for. And so if you're a job seeker and you're really looking for jobs, you know, how many jobs are there out there at the moment in the UK or how many jobs are there in general? And if you, if you go onto Google and do a, a quick search, say customer service jobs, you get about 86 million results. So 84 million results from customer service jobs. So there's a lot of jobs out there at the moment. And if you go onto something like Indeed and you do a search for something similar to that, um, you get 84,000 jobs. So from that, we basically can confirm that there's millions of job seekers that are looking for jobs consistently all the time, and you have lots and lots of jobs out there for them to look at. So what, again, this is going back to the sort of struggles that small businesses might have to find, find those talent that they're looking for. Um, and basically there's three methods that you can do. This is all about maximizing your opportunity sure that you're still relevant to, to bigger businesses because you're going to have competition from bigger industries and bigger companies that have thousands of jobs they might have bigger budgets to utilize how do you compete with those kind of companies to make sure that you're still relevant and that you're still appearing in at the top of the results and people are still looking at your jobs and there's there's three main methods to do to doing that so we call it free inbound paid inbound and outbound so we'll talk about free inbound at the moment. Basically, free inbound is uh, anything you can do for free to get people to visit your website and to apply to any of your jobs. I mean, you were mentioning earlier today that you're getting inundated with phone calls for people looking for jobs that you don't have. That's a pretty good situation to be in because when you do get jobs that come up, then you're gonna have uh, potential chances to get them filled quite quickly. Mm -hmm. what, what do you do with, um, 
the people that call up? Do you simply just tell them that you haven't got any work? At the we email. We 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 have got a, a standard scripted email now, which just says that we don't have anything available at the moment. Check yeah. back with us in about six months' time. Right. We'll on, or if they're students when they finish their degree. Okay. And do you do you get there when they email you? I'm presuming they probably give you their CVs and things yeah, like that. Yeah, they get all their CVs and portfolios. Yeah. So do you do you delete them? Do you keep they're them? All, they're all kept in one folder on my computer. Yeah. yeah. Do you then sort of highlight the ones you look at that look really really good so that you might know when they're the, 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 there's only the old one that really stands out. Which yeah. I like highlight. <coughs> but um, I mean, it depends on the type of work that we will have available. So if it's those outstanding candidates, you might not want to come and do some of the things that we may have. So. Right. Okay. Is, is anyone else like in a uh, in a similar risk position, or what's the sort of situation now? Do you have any needs? Do you have people contacting you? Have you got anything at the moment that you have an applications for? Are you struggling for anything at the moment? We're very similar. Mm. We get a lot of emails asking for yeah. kind of producers, and, and we're similar. We've got a, a folder. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. So, um, sorry, just yeah. out of curiosity, where are these job seekers finding these uh, contacts, or well, like, how the are they sent? I think it's the top business that um, we're in. Is right. uh, I don't know. If, 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 if I don't make a comment that might sound wrong, but I think those things sound it's, it's exciting to be in the movies or in the TV. Yeah. You know, it's exciting to mess around with new toys and gadgets, which is what you know what we do. It, it seems to be it seems a bit more glamorous. Although, to be, to be honest, the work is essentially the same as any other business. Most of it's admin, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> accounts. Yeah. So it's not it's not that glamorous. But so I think that's why we get inundated with with young with young yeah. applicants. But how do they find your contact details? Um, mostly from the internet and <laughs> from previous work. Yeah. Google search or something. Which is great for our yeah. for our optimization because we don't really have to do much of it because other people do it for us. Yeah. So. Okay, brilliant. So you're paying someone to do that? No, 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 no. It's just, just for the, the number of people that look for okay. us. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, that's a good example then of, of free inbound is mm. free traffic you're getting from, from search engines uh, like Indeed, like Google, where you're not necessarily putting much money into it, but you're getting people discovering you from doing searches and and just coming to your website seeing you and contacting you um, so that's a brilliant way to, to sort of get the, the types of applications and just getting people noticing you um, there's lots of other things you can do as well uh, simple things like if, if you own a bar or a restaurant just putting a, a poster up on on the window saying you need bar staff it's a great way of getting people to come in and give CVs and applications to you. Uh, social media as well now is probably more prevalent than ever, especially with um, sort of in industries like yours where a lot of people will be using things like Twitter and Facebook to sort of look at new opportunities and job opportunities that may come up. Um, so things like optimising your site to make sure that you get the best possible return is really, really important. And um, I think we have actually run a workshop here before that was specifically around keywords and things that you can do to, to optimize your site and optimize your jobs. Um, so if anyone's sort of interested in finding out more about that, then I'm sure we can give you some information to where you can point yourselves in the right direction to get some details on how to do that. So that's, that's brilliant in terms of getting that sort of much free exposure because you're not really paying anything for it. Um, the next level is the paid inbound. So this is obviously where you're more likely to be with some of the higher level positions. So it's, obviously you might have a lot of graduates applying to some of your positions. If you have like a, a high end visual designer or something that you might need, you might, you might not get the sort of exposure you need from, from having from free channels. So these are things that we obviously do where you, you can look at things that are paid for performance type of models, which will give you the sort of results that you might need for those that are hard to fill jobs. I'm going to go into that in a little bit more detail later on sort of, uh, in, in the presentation. Um, and obviously that's probably what the workshop's about. So, And then the last sort of stage of that is the, is the outbound element. That's where you're utilising channels to go and actively headhunt people that you need for specific roles. So normally that would take up a smaller amount of budget in terms of recruiting because it's sort of come to the end point where you need to actively go out and find people to fill positions. Um, again, we did a, a sort of uh, a survey and we did some research into 
the types of people and how people would be coming into a new company and typically if you're headhunting someone they may not be as invested in the brand as someone who would actively look at joining you um, because obviously you're going to try and, uh, and convince them to come over to work for another company so it can be sometimes a bit more uh, difficult a longer time period to get them invested into into the company than someone who actively finds you themselves and applies to the job they're probably typically going to be more invested in your brand um, so in terms of you know, investing to reach the right candidates, what can you do to, uh, to do that? Um, some people mentioned SEOs here and everything before. Has anyone used, you know, I'm guessing some of you are probably familiar with Google AdWords? You did SEO, yeah. is that right? Is that what you're currently doing at the moment, is it? More sort of the organic search, but have to yeah. AdWords. Is it just completely organic and stuff, you think? At the moment, yeah. yeah. But I have sort of dabbled in it, but it can be, it can be quite costly if you really got the budget that you should do. Yeah, okay, great. Um, so basically, you're probably pretty familiar with this, um, search engines like Google, like Indeed, uh, use a pay-per-click model. And what that basically is, is that you are setting a budget or saying something against a certain term or a certain job where you say, I am prepared to pay 20p per click every time someone clicks on a job. It doesn't mean you're going to pay 20p every time someone clicks on it. It completely depends on the relevancy of the search and what other people are paying in terms of that. So it's essentially a, a, a method to ensure that you get the right level of exposure and to appear on top of the search results. So uh, another thing, you know when you go onto Google and you do a search, um, how often do you go through all of the pages? Do you typically just stick to the front page? Yeah? And then you look at probably the, typically the top three or four positions and then that's it, you don't really tend to go further down. Um, I normally skip the top five. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start at the bottom three and then the next page. Yeah. I tend to get a better deal. <laughs> yes, they start to sponsor those bottom ones as well, so, so uh, yeah, you might pick in the sponsor ones there too. Um, so basically that's what pay per click is, you're effectively paying to get your results at the top of the page to make sure that you get the best exposure to the, the right sort of people that you're hopefully trying to, to reach out to. Um, there's lots of different ways to sort of do it. We have automated processes in place that get you the best possible results during peak level times. It's the same thing that Google does is what we do as well, but there's also manual processes to it as well so you can have full control over what you're prepared to pay and what your budget is per job. So for example, if you um, wanted to only spend a total of 50 to 100 pounds on one specific phrase or a specific job, you set limitations in to make sure that you don't go over that amount. Um, so it gives you a, a lot more control over what budgets that you wanted to look at allocating depending on the term. So it it's, gives you complete control over what you want to do in terms of sponsoring your jobs to get the best results. Uh, typically, there's no sort of contracts involved with it either. Um, with with other places and other avenues, you probably have to approve, come to like some sort of an agreement with having jobs up for a certain period of time, whether that's six months or a year, or how many credits you have. Normally, there is no contracts or anything associated with it, so you have sort of complete control over what you spend and what you don't spend. And again, this gives you a lot more like flexibility with with what you're doing. So. For example, if you have uh, an urgent need for a customer service assistant that you needed to get straight away and you wanted to get the exposure as quickly as possible, you could allocate something towards that to get it up to the top of the results. But then say in three days time you, you got the perfect candidate and you filled that position, but you already allocated for it to spend another £70 or something over a certain period of time, you just stop it so you don't spend it. And then you can divert that to anything else you need to do or just stop spending altogether. So you have like sort of full control over what you do in terms of that. And that's sort of uh, the sort of model that we and uh, you use and what Google uses. And normally you'd get about five times more exposure from doing it in this method than completely relying on the organic stuff. Um, and the key, the, the key thing to that really is, and what we really, really we go on and on and on about with a lot of clients is data. Um, data is really, really, really important to make sure that you know what it is that's performing for you so you can measure your return on investment 
Um, if you don't know what's the best channel for you in terms of getting the people you need, then you're going to be investing money in the wrong places. We provide and Google provides and there's lots of statistics out there to show you, you know, what performance you're going to achieve, how you're performing against other companies and other terms, and ultimately allows you to sort of make sure that you're investing your money in the right areas as and when you need to. So rather than sort of sort of blindly going into something and not having anything to back that up, you would have all the information and statistics that you need to ensure that you get the results that you need. You get the ultimate return on investment that you that you, you, you desire and what you need in terms of the, the candidates that you're looking for. Um, so basically to conclude that by giving yourself the best possible chance at the job market, you really need to look at those three areas, the free inbound, the paid inbound and the outbound levels that you can do. Um, there's brilliant examples of the three elements that you guys are already achieving and then obviously in terms of future aspects for other other needs, you can look at paid, out, uh, paid inbound and outbound as well. And I can't stress enough how important the data is. Don't look at, if you're looking to invest anything at all in regards to recruiting people, make sure you have the data and the information to back up what you're doing because you don't want to invest money that you're going to need on something that doesn't work. Um, so that's pretty much it really in terms of uh, in terms of that. I mean, so open to, to, to questions from anyone about uh, anything that they want to ask.